Hey guys, I'm Tony Tian and if you're new to this channel, I'm a second year medical student at University of Otago and actually I just finished my second year and I'm going to my third year. So basically today what I want to share about is because I just finished my second year and um, practically it's also like the first year that you're in the actual medical school uh, here in New Zealand because the first year is sort of like a competitive entry program and the second year is where they actually tell you, okay, you're a medical student now, you're actually in the medical program and you're going to be a doctor. So. I just want to talk about some of the biggest challenges that I faced uh, throughout my study in my second year and some of the tips for uh, the future students. Alright, so basically it's a, it's, a rough, it's a rough year whatsoever and every year is a pretty rough year. But looking retrospectively, um, I would happy to claim that I'm a different person now compared to when I started this um, at the beginning of the year and that's kind of how I assess um, my, my past years as well. It's like, have I become a better person? Have I uh, become a little bit different than how I started the year with? And um, it's also actually just um, fresh into 2022, so uh, I feel like it's a, it's a good way to do it. Yeah, first day of 2022, woohoo! So, uh, first I want to talk about uh, the academic things, so some of my academic hindrances. So, um, I feel like there's always this idea, okay, that smart is a genetic trait. Like, someone's genetically smart, he's just naturally smart, so he, he can do everything really well, he can, um, you know, do all the academic stuff really well. So, it's either because they have, like, a really impressive a great or they're super efficient with studying so basically someone who, who you never see them study and they still acquire really good grades but these can be either explained by the amount of time that they invested into study or they just have a really efficient study methods but uh, regardless think about someone who grew up in a very academic family um, both of their parents have a PhD degree and throughout his entire childhood He's been encouraged to do things like reading, uh, doing math, and all of these. And let's say if this kid has siblings and being uh, being the one who can solve math problems and all of that is giving him more uh, favor from his parents. So his parents basically do this kid who is smarter, more academically successful, a little bit more. So imagine growing up in this uh, kind of family and versus someone who grew up in like a really artistic family where both parents are maybe like pianist or some other stuff where the academic success is not being emphasized as much. So um, both kids from different family can be equally intelligent, okay, have the same IQ when they were born out of the womb, but as they progress along the trail, one has become more smarter th stereotypically and the other one is going to become more artistic uh, stereotypically. So basically what I'm trying to say is that smart, um, so as being like a genetic trait for me is more um, of an acquired skill. And basically if it's an acquired skill, it takes more time and effort to build. And therefore, um, that we know we need to invest more time in it, but the thing we need to think about is is how we're going to spend our time. So um, there's always this delusion of interest that um, we think we're more interested in something else and we need to, you know, uh, sort of form of a career, doing something we, we're, we're interested in. We shouldn't do something that's boring, tedious. It's always got to be something that we have interest in. And the thing about having interest in something is that we, we always have this initial phase of being super interested into something or thinking that something is really interesting and we find a huge, like a huge amount of things, uh, tons of things being very interesting. And this is because we are always thinking about the, the sort of the image that what we're going to be like after we've been super successful in these fields. So, for example, we can be really uh, interested in football and that's because we're thinking about Lionel Messi. And we might be really interested in basketball and it's because we're thinking about Shaq, we're thinking about LeBron James, we're thinking about Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant. We like to imagine ourselves as being them and as being in the state of successful. But the thing is, when you are working towards that goal in the end, you're not there and therefore you're not going to get all the things that you're dreaming of and once you're sort of halfway along the trail and uh, after that initial excitement you start to realize there's so much work that you need to put into it to get to where you think you're gonna look like and that's where the po uh, that's at the point where people stop and think like oh this is boring this is tedious this is taking too much work and I'm gonna be interested in something else and therefore starting on something else again and so 
what this ends up making us into is someone, you know, who knows a little bit of everything, but not super proficient or um, super good at, at anything. And the thing is, I feel like we need to break this delusion of interest. And because anything takes hard work, and we're interested in a lot of things, so just pick one and don't fluctuate during the middle. So because this is because during the middle of the year, I sort of have this place that I was thinking about, am I really interested in medicine? Shall I be doing something else like sport? Shall I, um, you know, just drop all of med and maybe do something more like psychology, physics? And personally, I'm super good with numbers. I did really well in calculus back in high school and such. So I was also thinking, shall I do pick up like a math degree instead? And also, I am kind of have this personal interest in like music and music and drama, and I was like, yeah, should I pick up an art degree instead? Basically, all these ideas come up, and it makes me really hesitant about, you know, putting my, uh, the main, the main, um, bulk of time of mine, put it, put it into medicine, and I was thinking about, you know, spending time on training myself to be all these other things, and then, um, the problem is I become very diversified, and I couldn't spend enough time, um, on medicine to, to a level that is required. Over this period of time, I really had this realization that um, anything takes hard work for those things that's seemingly to be more interesting than medicine is simply because I'm imagining those those sort of future pictures. And if I actually think about the, the amount of work that I need to put into it to achieve those, if I want to be a dancer, if I want to be an actor, how much training I actually need to um, put into it to become a decent actor, it's not going to be any anywhere less then I need to put into medicine. Therefore, also the fact that medicine is not this some sort of super fancy um, degree that everything, oh wow, you're, you're doing medicine, it must be so hardcore, you must be so smart or something. No, I actually think it's just as difficult as being um, good in everything else. And the thing about medicine is that um, being you can't be a shitty doctor because you're gonna kill people and you have to be a decent doctor. But I guess maybe for some other degrees, like if you wanna be like an actor, um, you can be a shit actor because you can just be doing some really minor roles in the back but if you want to be a, a good actor, as good as being a doctor is you're, the amount of effort that you put, in, uh, put into it is actually going to be very similar or even harder I don't know right so uh, that's basically the first tip I'm going to give so just think about anything takes hard work and whenever you're fluctuating about your interest and all of that just think about the amount of hard work that you need to put into everything and also think about the fun you can get out of medicine after all these hard work and after you actually being in the hospital and with all this knowledge and you can actually help people and treat people and the second thing I actually want to talk about is the social perspective it's social anxiety and so it's a very commonly mentioned word and um, the fact is that even some of the most confident people that I've talked to have social anxiety issues at some point in their life. As medical students, we get FOMO all the time, fear of missing out. And this is mainly because we need to study to be a competitive doctor so we don't kill anyone in the future. And basically we need to selectively choose to stay home and study, uh, stay in the library and study, while all our friends are like outside partying and doing all of that. So the thing is when we're staying home and we're when we were studying all of that, we see all these Instagram posts about people having fun out there and we always think we're missing out on something. We're always thinking, oh, am I a little bit detached from um, my friend group? Am I, uh, is my friends gonna, you know, just not care about me anymore and think I'm like a nerd, think I'm a, like a, like a low-key, not fun kind of person? And um, I feel like when these kind of thoughts came up to me last year, I, I struggled with it and I was really hesitating between, you know, going out and just hang out with my friends or actually just stay home and do the, do the work that I actually need to uh, get done. My friend group was really, you know, sort of like academic friendly, so we really, it's, it's a pretty academic friend group and everyone sort of respect, um, respect you if you need to, you know, take a bit of me time and just get what needs to be done, done for yourself. And, um, or at least I believe so, I believe my friend group is something like that. But for some of you out there, you might have a friend group that's a little bit, a little bit more um, party maniac and you might feel a little bit uncomfortable just mentioning that you need to study or uh, do your exams and stuff. And the thing is, um, the world is something very subjective. Um, so this is my personal point of view. So the world is very subjective and it's, it doesn't matter how the world objectively is. 
as long as you're subjectively believing something. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter how the world um, actually is. So, which is the reason why you may find it really difficult to convince uh, like a Christian person that J the Jesus story is not real and it's very hard for you to convince someone who's super scientific, non-religious kind of person, atheist, to believing that the Jesus story was actually real. Um, so as you may can see, this can become a infinite, infinite loophole because even if you, let's say if you manage to actually prove that the Jesus story is real or unreal and you have all these evidence, what the other people, or what the other people can think who's like so stuck in their belief as everyone else is in this world, what they're gonna believe is that you actually, um, you know, just fabricated these evidence, and none of these evidence are actually real, and these are just made up facts, and they're still gonna believe in their, um, in their belief system, and no matter how much evidence you bring up, they can always think like that. So this just goes on infinitely. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that no matter what you do, people are gonna think what they think is real. So there's no point of changing other people's belief, but also something to um, to take note of is that whatever you believe is real for for yourself and also for this world because it's kind of like your ideas just shape the world around you. It's it's very weird, but also kind of interesting to think about. And basically, what I'm trying to say is believing something that doesn't make you miserable. And if you are thinking about something miserable, just think about how you can sort of shape your th shift your thoughts into a way um, that's making you comfortable and just believing that because what you believe actually can become real all right and so that's just some of my personal realization there's some bullshit philosophy in there and i feel like i just love you know i just can't stop talking about them it's just so fun all right it's yeah it's like kind of like you're having deep meaningful chats with your friends but i'm just talking to a camera same thing i guess um so basically just wish you guys all the best and hopefully this video can help you a little bit and um, leave any thoughts or questions in the comment section below and also feel free to check me an email or something. I've had, I've had people um, sending me emails asking me questions and you know I've just been doing my best to try to um, reply to all of them so feel free to just hit me up and I'll see you next time. Bye!